Liverpool, the heartbeat of the Grand National. In 1829, William Lynn, the proprietor of the Waterloo Hotel, decided to rent some land six miles north of here at Aintree in the hope of staging horse racing. Six years later, after a visit to watch a steeplechase, he decided to have his own, and with the novel idea of starting it and finishing it in front of the grandstand to create excitement and generate some custom. Along with his good friend, Captain Martin Beecher, they created a global sporting event that's still going strong almost two centuries later. 40 horses, 40 jockeys, 30 fences, one winner, celebrated around the world. I was lucky enough to finish in the first four and six occasions, but sport is about winning, and I had the privilege of doing that twice. Papillon in 2000 was my first ever ride in the Grand National, and he was my only ride at the whole meeting, but what a ride it was. What do I remember? Bobby Joe making a mistake at Fine Avon. Holly Bank Buck and Peter Niven appearing on my outside as we jumped the third fence on the second circuit. Lucky Town appearing up on my outside then on the David Casey as we raced all the way back from Valentine's to the Melling Road where fair, four loose horses were galloping at us. And then thinking I was going to win the Grand National as I went to the second last fence, only for Norman Williamson to arrive on Melly Moss. We jumped the last side by side, I went clear going to the elbow, again with the dream that I was going to win a Grand National, only for Papillon to stall off the elbow and Melly Moss get a run back on my inside. Papillon rallied, and from the water jumped to the line, I knew I was going to win a Grand National. It's 50 yards, it felt like 5 miles. But by Jesus, I'd love to live it again. To the inside, they straighten up for home. 100 yards left to go. Papillon on the near side. Mealy Moss the far side, trying hard to wear him down. It's Papillon holding on with 50 yards left to go. And Papillon wins the Martel Grand National for Ruby Walsh and Ted Walsh. Second is Mealy Moss, third then Nicky D. 23 years since I first came to ride here at Entry, and I still get lost making my way from the city out to the Grand National race course. But at least on the return leg, you can see Radio City Tower and find your way back to the middle of the city. I was lucky in 2005 that Headshunter knew exactly where he was going, and when Clan Royal was taken into the corner of Beecher's Brook under Tony McCoy, Headshunter stepped right and jumped his way into the front of the Grand National Field. I had planned on riding a waiting race, but hey, you are where you are in the Grand National, and as I jumped the canal turn in front, I was able to slow it down all the way back to the main race course. Jock Thornton arrived outside me going to the second last, but Headshunter was going that easy. I even had time to look at the big screen to see how far in front I was. Maybe if I controlled my emotions going to the elbow and hadn't set sail and won by 15 lengths, Headshunter could have returned the next year and won a second Grand National. But he'll always be my second Grand National winner. Ruby Walsh is going to win the John Smith's Grand National on Headshunter. Fell in the last last year, but too good for them this time. Headshunter wins it, a second Grand National for Ruby. So when all is said and done, how do you actually win a Grand National? I don't know if anybody really knows, but down there is Liverpool Lime Street Station. Trains run forever, and Grand National winners have to stay, and stay forever. It is four miles and three furlongs. you just got to stay. Two, you need a bit of luck. Rachel Blackmore had it in 2021, and she avoided the faller at fence 12, but in 2022, she got brought down to Preacher's Brook. Three, it's definitely the fences. There's 30 of them. They mightn't be as big as they once were, but you've still got to negotiate them all. Low, quick, slick jumpers win now, and you've got to get from A to B pretty quickly. Four, they used to say you should spend all night in the Delphi Hotel. I'm not so sure that one works anymore, but you've still got to enjoy yourself, because the Grand National, it is about enjoying it. And there are the instructions I was given when I wrote Papia. And five, and probably most importantly, you've got to be Irish, because it's all about the cracking.